it's kind of old fashioned, but I think it really suits the age of the excavator. And I also like the pattern in combination with this brown one, so I think it will work out. I also bought this LED light beam and I'm gonna put it up there at the cab and that way we get excellent lighting at night. So if you ever have to work in the dark, it won't be dark where we work. So I found this old car radio on eBay. It's still in decent shape. The only thing it doesn't have is a USB and Bluetooth connection, but it's a mini excavator. So let's build this one in. Complete leather clothing is in, so we got leather on all the flat panels in the cab and also on the roof, except that I got the roof still laying there because I first want to connect the radio. That's way easier if the roof is off. So let's connect the radio and then get the roof on. And besides the radio, we also need to connect this one here. So let's wire up that radio and also the light and then we should be good. I got the radio working, so now it's time to put the roof on the cab. So let's get it up there. I put the roof back on, now we can put the cab back on the excavator and we should be ready to work with it. I think the radio is sitting in there really nice and we also got two speakers in there and that's just way more than enough for an excavator cab, so perfect. So I got this special material to isolate the engine room because I want to make sure that I get no vibrations or noise coming from the engine into the cab.
this wall out beautiful. So now I've got a really nice engine room. So now let's get it installed on the machine again. Let's get the cap back on there. So the cab is back on there, now we can put the windows in. So let's see if we can get them ready to put in. So I have learned a little trick to put the windows back in as I have to get all this rubber all around back into its place and to actually do that I made a rope completely around and this way I can pull the rubber over by just pulling on the rope. I just have to make sure that everything comes around nicely and then we should be able to get the window back in there exactly how it was. So let's try that trick out and see if it works. The windows are back in place and they seem to fit perfect so I am really happy with that. Of course it's quite quite a risk if you adjust the whole side of the excavator and you have the windows to get them actually to fit but it fits perfect so I'm really glad about that. Everything seems to be good so far so what I want to do next is to make the flooring in as I still have the old floor but I need to copy it from new metal. Uh, that's just sheet metal and it's completely rusted and with the plasma cutter which I now have it's really easy to copy it so I am gonna copy it and then we should be good for another 30 years or so with this floor. So this is the reason why I kept the old floor now I can easily draw how the floor exactly looks like and that way I can cut it out so let's see if that's gonna work. Looks like the new floor fits in, so now let's paint it. That's definitely giving some light. Perfect. Well, look at that. Here we got two chairs, so I'm gonna take out the back one as I like to have the back one in the mini excavator. 
The front one is one that we save up for the 423 once this chair is worn through. So we are going to use the back one. This is our old chair of our International 633 and we took that out 15 years ago when we put an air suspended seat in there and we saved it like until we could use it and today is the day so we are gonna put this chair into the mini excavator and I think then I have a really nice seat as I know this one was already great on the International back then it was just, we were fitting new chairs on the 956 and some other tractors which were worn through and it made sense to just give all the tractors a new chair at that moment and the 633 was lucky enough to get an air seat in there as that would fit in there so it means this one came free 